I, I said I was up feeding cats. I said the cats were swarming, which they were. Ah. Do do cats. Yes, cats happen. Cats happen on multiple fronts, it seems. Well, that's how it works. They always try to get more food. Because if they don't, they will literally die. You know this. Or at least they will tell you they will literally die. Okay. <clears throat> We've gotten through the first three chapters. The cavemen, the kung fu. And unfortunately, as far as kung fu goes, we kind of have the weakest character out of the three we could possibly have. So, kind of, um, that, that's going to kind of be a detriment later. I'm just going to keep saying that. Anyway, we have Cowboy, and Cowboy here is, uh, what's, what are the best words to describe the Cowboy? Oh yeah, Glass Cannon. A Cowboy will eventually get the strongest freaking normal attacks there are, but he won't be able to take a hit. So, uh, you know, one of those things. Also, yeah, sh yeah you're, you're probably going to get to make a whole lot of Brokeback references there, uh, Lady Mage. Although not necessarily at the uh, Cowboys. Not, not necessarily aimed at him that much. Anyway, let's get started, shall we? In a time when the West is wild and criminals were many, a haggard traveler with a price on his head wanders into Success Town, the recent target of a notorious outlaw gang. Work quickly to set traps and take down the crazy bunch. It applies much less to him than it does, uh, Wolf. I'll just say that. Stop that. Well, you can ship it. It would probably work to ship it, but I'm just saying. That, that's a sheriff. He's kind of useless. And the music is going to be funky in this chapter. You can just barely hear the music. They tried to do a thing where the closer you were to the music, the louder it was. And right now the source of the music is apparently outside of town. Or they just messed up the coding. More than likely the second one with this a little bit. Because it'll be, you get this really soft, fuzzy, galloping number that happens throughout the chapter. And just every now and then it'll pop into super sharp clarity. So kind of be ready for that. So the barkeep says howdy. 
and the sheriff asks him for the wanted poster. That wanted poster just happens to be our character whose name is Sundown. The Sundown Kid. Let's see if I can go without the fan today. Yesterday was just freaking miserable. They didn't feel quite so bad. And there's Sundown! Just traveling alone on his horse. Then, um... Dude here! It was about 105 here yesterday. And dude here will uh, say who he is in the bit. But he said, yeah, my little friend here is going to put the final nail in your coffin, basically. They don't run away now. You mad dog. That's right, Mad Dog, not Wolf. For some reason, I was thinking Wolf for a because of a specific line of dialogue that happens later. And uh, Mad Dog here is a bounty hunter that's been chasing Sundown for apparently a very long time. How many times have we done this? And it almost feels like we're sweethearts or something, you know? That's also... Gonna end today! It, it's not. Because we have this thing called Double Shot, which, uh... Pretty much breaks him down to the death point. Then he shoots us to hit us, and we have a counter that finishes him off. Notice we don't kill him, we just wound him. And it's like, why don't you ever kill me? Implying that they've done this fight many, many, many times and uh, he's never gotten the best of sundown yet so he's he's kind of a crappy bounty hunter really <laughs> and then he shoots him in the back one more time in the butt really, or the leg and scares off his horse The rains, okay. That's right. The rains. <laughs> yeah, the problem is these they're not gonna live that long. So we have the Old West chapter, Wandering. So Lady Mage, have you seen the meat of this chapter? As in what you actually do during the chapter? Because it th didn't take very long. And we can try to go to all these buildings. Okay. It, it's a tiny bit different from the other chapters. Notice that all these buildings are locked right now. 
And notice that there are eight of them. And each one's door is kind of in the dead middle of it when, you, when you're when you looking to get into them. This becomes important later. Are there eight or ten? Maybe ten. Ten houses. But you hear that kind of fuzzy background music again? Yeah, it, it's... The only door we can go into is in the crystal bar, which has beer. And you notice that the, yeah, the music immediately clears up. And then dies out because you, you look scary. Besame mucho. Another, another line for the shipping there. So now that they're done, there's no music. And and you can try try to talk to people. Oh, there is no player piano, so it's basically a mariachi band. We can find ourselves a bottle of bourbon back there, but that's locked. Locked. Not locked, however. Walked in on a woman dressing, she kicks us out. Unlocked. So you notice there's a $5,000 reward on our head. So anyway. Yeah. And... A dude, yes, we are the $5,000. That's why uh, Mad Dog was going after us, supposedly, to get to claim the $5,000 bounty on our head. And this dude is just walking up to us, acting all big and tough. And the woman we barged in on earlier, that is Annie, because of course her name is Annie. <clears throat> and apparently the bad dude there never pays his tab, so, you know. And, and he is a charmer. He's a charmer. So you may be thinking, can we kill this dude? The, the answer is yes. We, we can easily kill this dude. And then he seems to be the only one around here with a backbone. He's like, what's the matter with you guys? Do you just have toys in your holsters? Yeah, I like her too. And uh, she's going to address them by name here and pay attention to the names. It's not important, but it is a nice little tidbit. Wayne. Gene. Clint. And Gibson. Yeah, yeah. They are alluding to exactly what you think they're alluding to there. 
Edgar, your name's the only good things about you? Mel Gibson played a cowboy once. Yeah. That's a Gene Autry, John Wayne, Mel Gibson. That you, you get the idea, yeah. It's not like I said, it's not important, but it is a nice little Easter egg. I like strong girlies. Just picture him missing about a dozen teeth or so. Sundown's just kind of trying to notice, yeah, noting how Gibson is now, yeah. But back then, back then he was okay. Well, he probably wasn't, but we didn't know about all the nasty stuff he was. He was. Annie Oakley, yeah. Except this Annie won't actually fire a gun, sadly. But she does smack the living hell out of this guy, which is good. I like Annie. Also, meet the second character in this town with any type of backbone, Billy the Kid. Yes, that, that, I'm pretty sure that pun was intentional. The uh, son of the sheriff, basically. Also note the sheriff is useless and has no backbone either. But his kid does. And we get told to, he gets told to shut his bazoo. And then he picks up the kid and throws him into sundown, which is makes this completely sundown's dance now. Uh huh. And I don't know if you know anything about old westerns, but offering to buy another gunman a drink. And then, uh, and then making that drink milk, that's kind of an insult. It's like saying he's not a man, basically. So we could drink it, but, uh, I want to kill this dude. Yeah, dude doesn't know who the hell we are, and he's throwing around the insults like this. So he basically tell him to get lost. Which, um... So there's what he looks like. Just to, um, just to, uh, let you get a good look at this desperado here. But when push comes to shove, he's like absolutely nothing. And even though we kill him in the in the battle, he gets to run off. Yeah, he's a cartoon. Yeah, apparently they thought we were a member of the crazy bunch. Which is, uh, as we will learn, a group that's been kind of harassing the town. Yeah, we really cleaned his plow. For a second, you must hurt Despacito. Oh, God. Yeah, there's a the line, you're a regular old curly wolf, ain't ya? 
That's what I was thinking of when I called the other guy Wolf. <clears throat> and of course, now that that's happened, the sheriff finally shows up after there's been gunfire exchanged. Hey, I found the one version of Despacito I liked. And I'm happy with that. So this so this uh sheriff's son is fed up with the sh with his dad. <clears throat> and he's also a massive freaking coward. Who claims that if they just stand up to these uh, to these uh, outlaws, all they're going to do is make them mad and they'll destroy the town. Which may be true to an extent, because they have absolutely no one in town that actually wants to fire a gun. That he, and he kind of puts up a really good point. We can't just keep on like this forever. And she yells at everybody here. Ah, uh, good old, very old lingo. Annie, don't discount yourself. Yeah, the kid and the girl are the only two with any guts whatsoever. And the stranger that just walked in and cleaned the clock of one of the goons with, like, one move is going to you know, have exactly who he is told. Because a uh, mad dog shows up. And the thing is, I don't know if they had a position on him, really. The Sundown Kid. And suddenly he remembers the wanted poster. Oh, mad dog, will you never learn? So we can try to dot, dot, dot our way through this. But we'll just get the same, it's a but thou must situation. And Billy doesn't want to believe that this guy that just came in and could potentially be the town's new savior is a wanted man. Billy really doesn't want to believe that. It's like, yes, we did scare your horse off. So now you're mad at us. And it is time for a showdown. I don't think there's high noon involved, though. Of course, once again, he tells us, don't run away now. But 
the kid's still rooting for us. And we can talk to everybody here. And just in case you're curious, she has relocked her door behind her. And he does absolutely nothing. <clears throat> Ah, the tumbleweed. So standard duel. <clears throat> yeah, now kiss. Something's gonna get kissed. Did you notice they didn't shoot at each other? We got growl. And a couple of members of the crazy bunch were kind of hanging out. So we, we just kind of shot them dead. Oh, those two crazy, those two crazy bunch dudes? Oh yeah, they were hanging out with the, they were scouting out the place for a chance to uh, sneak up and kill everybody, basically. Because that's who they are. So for the time being, we're going to hit another western trope. So yeah, now we are basically teaming up with Mad Dog. And we're going to try and put them... We're trying to kill them, basically. <clears throat> and the big guy is the sole survivor of the Lost 7th Cavalry Division. A fellow by the name of Odio. Who is a bunch of lawless bunch of armaments. And he's probably going to head here. And then he promises us the money of the town if we manage to uh, shoot them. But yeah, there are 15 of them and two of us. Yeah, funny that. <clears throat> Hopefully none of them have the Zara Rudo variant. And yeah, they're just traveling entertainers, the mariachi band. 
So, with all that, everything is still locked. We can't access the rooms here. But now, we are about to start a timer. We will only have so much time to do things and then do other things. Namely, in this case, we are going to walk around this town, gather items, and we're going to make traps out of them. We only have so much actual real time to get this accomplished. And it's every time you take a step or examine something, the timer ticks, kind of like combat does. <clears throat> so talking to him twice basically starts the timer. Yeah, he wants to set traps to thin them all out a bit. And it certainly could not hurt. Kinda, yes. Kind of. And everybody in town basically offers their help with setting traps. Even these four, four uh, supposed gunmen's wives. Have, have you guys seen the movie The Three Amigos? I'm, I'm just asking. It, it, yeah, it's pretty close to that, yeah. And Billy just up and smacks his dad. He deserves it. Not just smacks, but swipes the dad's badge off of him and hands it to Sundown. I like this kid. And he's going to say, you know, you're sundown, but no, I don't know you. I don't have to bring you in or anything. And we got a badge. Which we can actually equip. And yes, we have temporarily joined up with Mad Dog. And he tells us it's a good idea to save now, which it is. But first... We are going to... basically take all of Mad Dog's equipment and stick it on Sundown because he needs it more. Don't have any gloves. I will. Okay. Okay. 